Hi everyone. Recently, uh, there are a lot of students request Beethoven piano trio an analysis. that is tested in AMAS TCL diploma in music theory. So I decided to create this video. If you like the content, please share it with people who can benefit from it. Let's talk about a, a little bit of background of Beethoven's music. Beethoven was not lucky in love. I think it was actually his own fault. He kept falling in love with women of high social standing or women already married to somebody else. And let's not forget the countless times he fell in love with his beautiful and young students. And he wrote many pieces dedicated to the girls he in love with. But it seems that he mistook their admiration and devotion to be loved. So when he fell out of love, he would also compose piano works to relieve the emotional pain. Okay, for example, he also uh, articulates that sense of rejection and longing in one of the most famous piano works ever, for Alice, for example. But the, the piano works that I'm going to analyze today is different. He wrote it for a friend instead of his lover. This piano trio in B flat major, Opus 97 by Ludwig uh, Beethoven, is a piano trio completed in 1811. That is the time uh, of his uh, middle period where he uh, started to get uh, become deaf. It is commonly referred to as Archduke Trio because it was dedicated to Archduke Rudolf of uh, Austria. Let's talk a little bit about the background story of this work. After telling the story, we're going to do an analysis, analysis of this piano trio uh, in first movement. And I've done a bar by bar analysis in this PDF format. Okay, it is downloadable, it can be downloaded, and it shows you bar by bar analysis and uh, what is the key and with course analysis and progression. And you know, I've also read some articles, it has 20 over pages in total. So the analysis is very detailed and will be very helpful for your diploma exam. But um, if you are already sign up for our MLS DCL diploma uh, theory course, this analysis of uh, first to fourth movement are totally free. But if you haven't annoyed our students, we would charge a small processing fee of $30 for one movement. But if you purchase all four movements together, you can get a bundle deal discount at 100 SGD for all four movements, which means it will be 25 SGD for each movement only. So you can share with your friends if you are interested to download our PDF format of the detailed, very detailed analysis. And you can write uh, into our email address pianoplaying at yahoo.com uh, to uh, purchase through PayPal. And then I will send you the PDF file once the payment uh, is received. So let's back to this uh, music again. Um, Archduke actually, uh, he, the piece that he wrote for Archduke is actually his friend who, who was the youngest son of Emperor Leopard II and Maria Luisa of Spain. In 1803 or 1804, Rudolf began taking, le uh, taking the lesson, piano lesson and composition from Beethoven. The two of them become friends and Rudolf became a supporter and patron of Beethoven. Okay, Rudolf is uh, this archduke. Their uh, meeting continued until 1824. Beethoven dedicated 14 compositions to Rudolf, including the Archduke Trio, which is this one that I'm going to talk about. Okay, the uh, Hammer Clavier Sonata, the Emperor Concerto, and the Missa Solemnize. So you can tell that this Archduke Rudolf with this uh, Beethoven are really close and very good friends. So Archduke Rudolf is the youngest son of Emperor Leopard II and brother of Emperor, uh, Emperor Franz, was one of Beethoven's piano and composition students and became the composer's most important patron. He was an excellent pianist and then engaged in composition activities himself. Beethoven dedicated him far more pieces than anybody else. So I think this is a very good piece that we're mentioning, so it'll be very important to him. This piece of music is very grand and novel, okay, and broad also. Though this will be Beethoven's last piano trio, it falls within his middle period, which is heroic period, characterized by many of these same uh, traits and here, his contribution to this uh, genre. The first and third movement occupied most of the trio and represents some of the noblest music ever 
can, uh, regardless of the uh, ensemble of the uh, development, uh, is absorbed with a fragmentation of the main theme. Okay, so you will see some fragmentation of, of main theme uh, being separated uh, and uh, borrowed as a motif and developed all over the movement. Um, sometimes it's the beginning of the motif, sometimes it's the middle of the main theme, sometimes it's uh, the tail of the main theme that being uh, manipulated. And each time um, it will develop to a climax and prolong uh, phrases and uh, sentences, musical uh, sentences. Okay, let's look at the music itself. This music is called uh, Trio, uh, Opus 97, okay, composed by Beethoven. Um, first, first of all, the main theme is introduced by uh, piano. Okay, the piano introduces the main theme in the beginning as an introduction. And later on, this main theme is taken over uh, by uh, violin. The first theme is taken by, over by violin in bar 14. As you can see here, it's in bar 14. And later on, in bar 20, there's a passing modulation in F major. Okay, so uh, this is a transit modulation uh, that modulate to the next section. Let's go to the next section. Mm. In bar 33, okay, I make it bigger. In bar 33, the first theme is being uh, introduced by cello again, occur in cello is over here. Okay, which is da, 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 da. Okay. So the main thing, this is how the main thing sounds like. Okay, maybe I will uh, play on the piano. Shown again all over the movement. Okay, so in bar 33, it is taken uh, over by the cello. Okay, so it's in bar 33 in cello. Over here. So if you have score with you, uh, you can actually refer to your score if you cannot see this uh, clearly. And let's move on to the next section. In bar 35, uh, melody in uh, cello again. Okay, so support by uh, right hand. This descending uh, auxiliary note. Let's move on to the next section in bar 40, 43. Okay, the interesting part about this 43 is Benevan start to have thicker texture. And this is the only section that he do it in homophonic for homophonic uh, writing in the string section. Homophonic, some students may think that homophonic means uh, melody with accompaniment, but homophonic also can refer to both instruments play the same rhythm. Okay, the same rhythm, but different notes. It, the note and the pitch doesn't matter, but they have same rhythm. You see, they are playing together. This is another form of homophonic. Okay, and this is this part has a thicker texture because um, the string section is playing uh, double stop, double stopping. Okay, let's move on to the next section. Okay, so next section. Is in bar 52 in B major, where Beethoven introduced a second theme. Okay, the second theme uh, in bar 52. Da, 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 okay, so it sounds like uh, in G major. You start to see overlapping of melody between the string section. So what, what does overlapping of melody between the uh, overlapping of melody means? It means like uh, this melody introduced by violin two, and later on uh, it go up to violin one. So when violin two is playing, violin one is quiet. When violin one is playing, the violin two is quiet. So they take turn to cover up the space, you know, to take turn to play. This we call it a uh, 
overlapping melodic idea. Okay, between strings. So this is a uh, uh, writing technique that Beethoven like to use in in this piece of music. You will see this overlapping of melodic idea keep occurring later on. Okay, so let's move on to the next section. In bar 64, the interesting part, okay, in, from bar 64 to 67 is you start to see this contrary motion. Okay, going down, the, the piano no longer play accompaniment, but the piano support the string. The string is playing accompaniment. Da, 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 da. You can see these are the accompaniment played by string. Da, 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 da. The string take over the piano like accompaniment, but the piano play overlapping melody again in contrary motion. Left hand go down, right hand go up, left hand go down, right hand go up. So this is uh, another interesting uh, writing technique in Beethoven's Trio Sonata here. He liked to use overlapping and this time is in contrary motion between the hands. Okay. Let's move on. Um, I, I'm, I'm able to go through by bar, bar by bar here, but you can see in my uh, PDF format that can be downloaded if you are interested to purchase. Okay, so uh, over here, I only introduced the interest, interesting writing technique in the Beethoven's uh, composition. So in bar 84, he starts to introduce this third theme. Da, 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 it it breaks into small little theme. Okay, in bar 84. It, it sounds like this. Okay, so this is a new another new melodic idea that da, 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 in sequence it going up uh, by sequence. Okay, so da, 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 then after that it go up okay, in sequence, and again you start to see a homophonic texture. Okay, again homophonic texture not only uh means if you have many accompaniment, it also means a few multiple lines playing the same melody together. Okay, so but it's only in string. Okay. Now we go back to uh next section uh that is unusual here is when you go into the development. Okay, so this first moment in sonata form, okay, it has come it has come to the end of the exposition. Okay, this exposition uh end with first and second house. Okay, this is the unusual part. Okay, usually uh you have a repeat, repeated sign, you restart and then come to the end. And af immediately after this section end, after the repeated sign, we should start with the uh, development. But over here, it has Beethoven writes first half and second house. That means the ending of exposition has two versions. Okay, so this is the first version, this is the second version. Okay. okay so this is the unusual part. Okay, but in bar 98, then only the development start here. He start to introduce the new melodic idea in bar 98. Okay, so this is a starting of development if you have a score with you. Okay, let's continue uh, to see what is uh, interesting in this section. Okay, in bar 115, no, in bar 109, 109. Okay, in bar 109, you start to see this. This keep occurring. What, what do you call this? Uh, during the diploma exam, they, uh, the analysis like to ask you, uh, what is going on here? There is a E flat major, okay? The fifth note of E flat major, which is B flat, keep on repeating at the inner part, inner part of right hand. So you can see this B flat that keep occurring, is actually a pedal, pedal note, pedal point. We call it a pedal point, a uh, dominant pedal point because the fifth note of E flat major keep occurring. And uh, he introduced a new motif in the right hand, uh, in melody of string in bar 115. Okay. And then uh, there is a, again overlapping of melody between string and piano. Just now was within string only, but now it's within uh, between the string and the piano. See the string introduced melody, then it go down to the piano part. And after that, it go up to string again, then it go down to the piano part. So this is the uh, overlapping. 
between string and piano. And next interesting part is come to uh, bar 134. In bar 134, there is a motif that borrow from the first theme, which is uh, partially borrow on it. By, uh, this is played by cello and only partially uh, uh, copied, he only he copied partially and in the middle section, this is uh, borrowed from the middle section of the main theme, okay? Uh, da, 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 da. okay? from the first theme and it go back to tonic in the G major for this section when he bore the main theme okay and so this is a uh, um, which bar 137 okay let's move on to 146 the part of first theme is introduced here again so it's in fragment it's fra being fragmented Okay, another section. He borrowed part of the first theme. And let's come to uh, another overlapping of string and piano. The melody is being overlapped. In bar 156, there's an overlapping of string and piano. So this is a string and then the piano take over. So this is in bar 156, okay? So now you can see a string and then piano and then a string until 165. So the one interesting uh, about this section is in bar 178, there is a homophonic, homophonic texture where all string and piano are playing the same, same rhythm. Okay, so this is another example of homophonic uh, texture where all instruments playing the same uh, rhythm, rhythm pattern. Okay, so uh, until 100, bar 191, finally, we have come back to the recapitulation. This is the part where he recap the first main theme. Okay, so this is uh, bar 191. So the first main theme is introduced. Da, 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 da. Uh, Introduced by piano, right hand, and this time is being decorated. Okay, perhaps I can uh, show you 191. Okay, so this is the recapitulation when the first theme is introduced again, but with decoration. <laughs> Here in the beginning of the music. Okay, so finally, this is the recapitulation when you recap the main theme in the beginning. Now, after that, the original first theme is heard in uh, cello in bar 204. Okay, so in uh, cello here. Finally, he introduced the original one, but it's uh, taken by cello. Uh, Look over here. He add in uh, some uh, interesting harmony here. Now let's move on to bar two hundred and twenty-two. The second theme is is being introduced here again. Okay, this is uh, what you hear in sonata uh, in the first first uh, first section, the exposition. Okay, the second theme is being introduced here uh, in bar two 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 hundred and twenty-two. Play by piano. And so this is the second theme that you hear in exposition.
position is being brought back again. So now let's move on to um, next section. There is a new motif in bar 232. The new motif is here. Okay, so we can take note. Okay, again, uh, there is a overlapping writing. Again, another example of overlapping writing between uh, string and piano. Okay, this time is in country motion. Okay, this part, this is going down and body one is going up. Cello going down, uh, the body one go up, cello go down, body go up. So this time the overlapping writing is, is written in country motion where piano just play the accompaniment. So this is in bar 243. And after that in recapitulation, he introduced a third theme in bar 84. Okay, so this is uh this happened in bar 253. The third theme is back again. Okay, so another overlapping between uh, bar 257 and 259. Okay, so the overlapping writing between a uh, string and piano, string, piano, and string. Okay, uh, so come to the coda in bar 268. This is the coda uh, where he want to uh, introduce some new idea to end the uh, recapitulation already. Okay, so coda, he will introduce the first thing first, the, 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 the same thing again. And before the ending, Koda means it, the music is, uh, is coming to the end very soon. Okay, before the real ending, the final ending, he built up a very big climax over here. Okay, this is very important. So um, this big climax is in bar, wait, let me see, 278. Okay, he built up a tension, a very big tension over here. Okay, a lot of tension is going on. So how do we distract the tension over here? We can see that the pitch of the melody is getting higher and higher and higher. First, we can talk about the pitch, the melody. Secondly, we can also see that the dynamics, okay, there is a crescendo dynamic marking. Okay, so the crescendo is getting uh, higher. The, the, the dynamic is getting louder. And the texture is also getting thicker. You see, all three instruments are very busy, uh, has very thick harmony. And uh, over here, apparently you see more notes. More notes are being played within one uh, crotchet. So it may sound faster, but over here, you are not you, you are not allowed to say that the music is getting faster because there is no tempo sign saying that the speed uh, is getting faster. But if you want to say the atmosphere of uh, getting more and more panic or uh, agitated, you can say that the note value is getting shorter. It means more note is played within one count. Okay, but please take note, the speed doesn't change. The speed is still the same, but it sounds faster. It sounds like it's faster, but because there are more notes to be squeezed into one, uh, one project beat. Okay, so over here you can say the note value getting shorter. Okay, but you cannot say the speed getting faster. Okay, because there is no indication saying that the speed is getting faster. Okay. Uh, we can also say texture. So we talk about melody going higher, dynamic is getting louder. And the uh, texture is getting thicker, like thicker harmony, but uh, and then shorter note value. Okay, so these are the five things that you can mention. Uh, if you you are asked why this is a climax at the ending. Okay, so uh, but we cannot say a uh, faster speed. Okay, now getting to the end, all the way to the end, we end with a uh, three big chords in piano and violin play the ending uh, melody. So uh, that's all about my uh, presentation. If you really like the content, please click like uh, to encourage me to give more presentation of second, third, and fourth movement. And please share it with uh, your friends or more people who can benefit from it. And apparently this is a, a sonata form, okay? Because it has uh, exposition, development, and recapitulation. And please uh, write me email for more detailed analysis in this PDF file format. Okay, so it gives you bar by bar analysis, modulation, and indication of cost. 
So I look forward to seeing you in my next lesson. Uh, in the next lesson, I may want to talk about uh, Bach Corel that uh, is tested in AMAS DCL or pop music. I haven't decided yet. Uh, it depends on uh, your request. So if you really like it, uh, please drop comments or if you have uh, any uh, question or anything that you want to share with me. Or you think if you find that I have some careless mistake, you can also drop in the comment area. Okay, you are welcome to uh, ask questions. Thank you very much for watching. Look forward to seeing you in my 